If you use to sit down and deal with electronics on your workbench, then definitely you are familiar with burning smells and smoke coming out of your breadboard, which is a big indication of that there is something going wrong, right? Well, definitely none of us create short circuits on purpose, and they happen accidentally. So is there a way of avoiding short circuits? In this video, I want to share with you two short circuit protection circuitries that I found online, explain their working principle, and compare between them. We have a lot to cover today, so what are we waiting for? Without any delay, let's start our video. Before diving into our topic, I want to let you know that I'm going to share cool relay based circuits in my next video. So make sure that you subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss anything. As a warm up, let's start with the relay based short circuit protection circuitry. From the circuit diagram shown, as long as there is potential difference supplied at the input terminal, the red LED that's connected to the normally closed terminal of the relay will be turned on indicating that the output is disconnected. When pressing on the push button, which connects the input to the output terminal of the circuit, obviously the input voltage will be the same as the output voltage. But hold on, you haven't seen the magic yet. Since the output terminal is connected to the relay coil through a diode, this means that once we have potential difference at the output, the relay coil will be energized, leading the relay switch to change its state so the connection is established between the common and normally open terminals. With that being occurred, now we have physical connection between the input and the output of the circuit. Of course, the green LED will light up indicating that we have potential difference at the output terminal. But what about the remaining circuit components? First of all, we have this series diode, which will isolate the relay coil from the circuit output terminal. This shunt diode, on the other hand, is a freewheeling diode, the way it works is explained in details in Make Your Own Relay Driver episode, so make sure that you watch that video if you don't know what freewheeling diode does. Finally, this shunt capacitor is a bypass capacitor used for stabilizing the voltage across the relay coil. Okay, so how can this circuit protect me from short circuits, right? When a short circuit occurs, what happens is that the electrical current will definitely select the path with lower resistance, shorting this whole part, which will lead to de-energize the relay coil, and the relay switch will return to its normal state. So, the physical connection between the input and the output will be lost, and the red LED will light up back again. After understanding the working principle of this circuit, let's see how it works in practice. I built up the relay-based short circuit protection circuitry on a breadboard and tested its functionality, and here's the result. I hope that you liked this video. Thank you for watching and Whoa, whoa, man, hold on. We still have one complete circuit to talk about, right guys? You haven't forgotten. Okay, okay, that's fine, no problem. The last thing I want to mention about the relay-based short circuit to protection circuitry is that both the red LED and the green LED share the same current limiting resistor, which I think is a nice idea, since anyways, they don't work together at the same time. Now let's move on to this transistor based short circuit protection circuitry and see how it works. When applying potential difference to the input terminal of this circuit at its initial state, a potential difference will be formed at this node, since in microseconds of time, electrical current will flow from the input terminal to ground, taking this path. And as long as there is enough voltage at the circuit output terminal, the NPN transistor will be turned on deriving the PNP transistor to ground, which will turn it on as well. This will establish a direct connection between the input and the output through the NPN transistor, shorting the red LED and lighting up the green LED as an indicator. And here's what happens when a short circuit occurs at the output. 
Of course, in such a case, the potential difference at the output will be zero, which will turn off the NPN transistor. On the other hand, the PNP transistor won't be derived to ground anymore, so it will be turned off as well. In this case, the electrical current will take the following path. Since this branch is not shorted anymore, so the red LED will light up indicating that the output is disconnected. And guess what? When the short circuit is removed, the transistor-based protection circuitry will automatically reconnect the input to the output since once again a potential difference will be formed at the output and the process will loop back again. After understanding the theory part, let's do something fun. I constructed the transistor-based short circuit protection circuitry and tested its operation modes and here's the result. After building the relay-based short circuit protection circuitry on a brief board, I've conducted a simple experiment to see the features of each topology to compare between them. The important parameters for doing such a comparison are voltage drop at the output, the current drawn by circuit in no load condition, and input-output isolation for safety. From the obtained results, we can see that the relay-based circuit consumes a relatively large current even in no load condition, due to the parallel relay coil. But the good thing about this circuit is that it provides isolation to your power source, which serves safety purpose. Now it's time to see how this circuits operate in action. So I used a buzzer as a load and tested both circuits. This brings me to the end of this video. Let me know which short circuit protection circuitry did you like in the comment section below and see you next time!